I think what happens is that first born daughters, because we are so used to being like, I'll be, I'll do this, I'll be responsible yes. for this. First of all, at the beginning, we are like the impressive children. You want to make your parents happy. You're in mm -hmm. school. You are so good at school. Mm -hmm. You want to be the best. Yes. Then I think for me personally, I think when I reached my 20s, mm -hmm. I just started being kind of like, no, actually, like, I'm going to disappoint you. Hi guys. Hi guys. My name is Mora. I'm Kayla. And we run a platform called Dear Woman that is yes. for young women. That's yeah, we share our journeys together. Absolutely. So today we will be talking about a very tough topic. We are going to talk about the struggles of firstborn daughters in African families. Okay. The bane of our existence, guys. <laughs> Actually, the bane of our existence. Gosh, okay. I mean, you guys, I think we need to have our own therapy that the government needs to cater for it. Will they? Will they? So both Kayla and I are firstborn daughters. Yes. In our homes. Yes. Me, first of all, my situation is even different. <laughs> Okay, I'm a firstborn daughter slash proxima. That's 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 me. Mora is I'm a firstborn daughter. I am a um, firstborn granddaughter. Mm -hmm. I am my dad's assistant in the yes, home. Yes. <laughs> I am my mom's helper in Literally. the house. Yes. A lot of things. I am so my sister's things. financier. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. Guys, what do the mantle? Do? The mantle is heavy. Okay. Yeah. The mantle is so heavy because I mean I come from a family of five children, right? Yeah. And my mom is a single mom, so I don't even need to. You don't explain even need to, to it. What that means? That means that I am the other parents. Okay. Mm -hmm. I am my mom's support system. I am her financial support system, emotional support system, mental, spiritual. Literally, I do the work of the head of the family. I cannot, I can, I can say that I'm the head of the family. <laughs> no, I'm telling you. And you know, it's weird. I've always felt from my young age that I will just be the head of the family. Whatever family I would land in, I would just be, be the head. head of the I, I always knew from a very young age, I felt the weight of the responsibility settling in shoulder. slowly, okay? Yeah. So I think in this video, we want to discuss, I think, our challenges. Yeah, and actually, it's something that I've, I've, I've seen quite a bit on the internet. Yeah. Um, I just want to talk about, like, challenges of being, like, a firstborn daughter. Yeah. And then at the end, we just talk about, like, okay, so now what do we do? Tuta do? No, tuta do. Now to... Vile to mejua, vile to mejua. How, what do we do? Like, as a firstborn daughter, what are the things you can do yes. to create more space for yourself? Yeah. Because let me tell you something. When you're a firstborn daughter, there is hardly any space for you. What you're the one to compromise, yes. you need to adjust, yeah. you need to be the responsible one. Mm -hmm. The caring one, the one setting an example. Actually, you're not allowed to fail. You can't. That's uh, the, 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 the overarching term, okay? As a firstborn daughter in an African family, it's almost like we are sons, right? We are sons. They're and actually, sons. your parents are even frustrated because you are not a son. They're frustrated. <laughs> They're like, that's the way, way. my goodness. You know, and then especially in, because I think in our, in our families, I have one brother who's small, but we are four girls, right? And also for Marat, there are two girls, girls. Right? So it's almost like you assume the mantle of the African son in an African home. You guys understand what we're talking about. So the things that ideally would be expected of a son in an African home, you're given that responsibility and you're told here. I actually differ. Let me tell you what. Mm -hmm. I actually think that firstborn sons don't even have the mantle of firstborn daughters. Let me give you a good example. Mm -hmm. In my family, I have a very present, active father. Yes. And he's active even in our extended family. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that he has... His younger sister, who is the first daughter, yes. has any less responsibility. Mm. She does not have any less responsibility. Mm. So his work is kind of like to generate the income, yes. to to make the money. Yes. She she also has to make the money, mm. but she's the one who needs to get into the nuances. She needs to see, did my mom eat? Does she have the right clothes? Mm -hmm. Do we have fruits? Yes. We have to go to the village to do this. Ooh. She needs to get into the nitty, nitty gritty. And then on top of that, still make money. And she has her own family. Ah, she has her own family. She has four children. 
No, not only must she be active there. Yes. We expect her to be active here. If I don't see her for two weeks, I'll call her. Yes. I'm like, I'm saying hello. Why didn't you come? Yeah. Why Why are you not here? Mm. You know. And I think what happens is that first born daughters, because we are so used to being like, I'll be, I'll do this, I'll be responsible yes. for this. First of all, at the beginning, we are like the impressive children. You want to make your parents happy. You're in mm. school. You are so good at school. Mm -hmm. You want to be the best. Yes. Then I think for me personally, I think when I reached my 20s, mm -hmm. I just started being kind of like, no, actually, like, I'm going to disappoint you. <laughs> actually, honestly, I think when I got into my 20s and I was just coming to even just a realization, you know, identity, all those things, we've discussed all those things, coming into yourself as a young woman, understanding who you are. Mm. I saw how difficult my mom had it, you know, mm -hmm. because my mom is also, as I told you guys, she's a single mom. So she's, she's the caregiver. She's also the provider. Basically all those things that Mora has mentioned. And in her own family. In her, this is not just in our nuclear family, in yeah. the larger extended Okari community. Okay. My mom is the one everybody looks up to. Right. And when I saw how much. She was suffering, right? You said not me. I literally said, you know what? Actually, no. no. Like this, history will not repeat itself. Because even when I look at my own family, because I come from a very matriarchal family, right? So in my family, women are the empowered ones, right? Like men really don't have a say in my family because they don't have a position and because they just, they have not done anything to deserve that position, right? So because of that, in my family, most, most of the women are the ones that are making the decisions, making the money, taking the children to school. Mm. They're basically doing everything, everything. right? Mm -hmm. But then there's a real danger in that, right? And I don't know if we should get into this right now, but guys, I think just, we always say this, but choosing a life partner is, I think, the most important decision you will ever make in your life. Because the person that you choose as your partner becomes your family, right? Now just tipping on that mm. you see all the roles you're used to playing in your house yes what happens is that you find yourself and i found myself mm. subconsciously auditioning for partner roles yes with the same qualities yes i am good at organizing at all yes i can cook mm. i can supervise mm -hmm. cleaning mm -hmm. i i'm good at like if you tell me like you need me to go to the business and check out something i can do that yes so you find yourself you've transferred those qualities and now you're going with them to your new yeah, like, so history is history not repeating itself, itself, right? And what happens is that you end up not having the, you end up having the role in your family. Yes. The one in your family. And your new additional, additional roles. Yes. So even when you join your new family, everybody knows, ah, Kayla is going to cook everything for the, for the, for the party. I'm telling you, and if you are not with the right partner, you will be in hell, okay? Because now you will be relieving your mother's mistakes, right? Because humanity, like just the way we are as humans, like life is very cyclic, right? Mm. So you find that even the, the kind of partner that you're drawn to is more likely or not the mirror of, let's say, your father or the male figures in your family, right? Mm. So because you've seen, okay, this is how women are in my family and this is how I am, you just, it's not just a new generation doing the same things. You know, so you, you, you find that you have your mother's frustrations, even as a firstborn daughter, right? It's like, it's almost like you become your mom. It's crazy, guys. Me, I've seen it. And I'm like, me, I say, I will actually do, whatever I see my mom doing, I will do the opposite of that. <laughs> I'm like, what am I seeing my mom doing? So how that has manifested in my life, I've noticed I'm not tolerant. Like me as a person, I am not a tolerant person. And I mean, sometimes that can come off as, I don't know, like prideful or rude or rude. <laughs> Why did you say rude like that? It's a fact. <laughs> yeah, it can come off as rude, but I just, I'm not a tolerant person, right? So I'm just less accommodating of when, when it's like when people make mistakes, I'm not the kind of person who will be like, okay, you want another chance? Do you want another shot? Do you want yet another opportunity to fail me? I'm like, at the first sight of Something that I feel like I cannot take. I'm like, okay. I'm like, your case, actually, your case is closed. Next, can we have the next person? I agree with you. And I think, okay, in the same vein, I think that for me, I have learned with time to be less agreeable. Yes. 
right? Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it 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 has been very hard for me to be like speaking up and. Yes, yes, me, yes. My, my family and my community is very patriarchal. Mm. So we to be exchanging words with like a man. It's yes. Like, you, yes. You it's a hurdle. That's a, a How taboo. do you mean? So this is when I actually don't agree with something. I'm like, no. Yes. No, no, that's not gonna work for me. Or I have learned even like to say no to like my relatives. Yes. To my sisters. Yes. To my mom. Yeah. To my dad. Because yes. the more I say yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it becomes a word that's here in the throat. Because the, the person even finishes making the request. Mm -hmm. You're like, yes, yes. I'll do and so it. you find yourself spread very thin. Absolutely. Where people are relying on you for everything. Yes. And I actually think that as younger, as older daughters, we see a lot of things and a lot of family dynamics mm -hmm. that our younger siblings don't get to witness. Yes. So then not only are you, you are, you're, <laughs> you're the protector. You're a protector. You're a protector. Of everybody on all sides, so you protect your parents, of course, and then you protect your siblings. Literally, you're protecting. I'm telling and you. And then who is protecting you? Who you're left? Li you're left out in the open, out in the open, vulnerable, right? Your mental health it's in it's in the dustbin. Actually, your mental health is completely in the dustbin. You not, not let's not even talk about your emotional well-being, okay? Because you've come from being the therapist for your own mom. On this side for your dad, God knows you, you have done ABCD. Yeah, you are literally spread completely thin. And I feel like for me, when I started seeing that, I saw this mantle that women, African women, right? Even just as firstborn daughters or even our mothers, this mantle of sacrifice, I was like, I I refuse it. <laughs> I'm like, I refuse. I refuse to sacrifice myself for the sake of others. I'm like, if we are all meant to perish, my goodness, it's God will protect us. I'm like, at the end of the day, this is what you're being children of God. Okay. So if people are perishing, I'm like, what can I do? What can, because will I use the last shilling in my bank account to make sure that the family does not perish? No. You know, so I feel like sometimes, even as a firstborn daughter, you deal with a lot of guilt, right? Okay. It's almost like even when you're trying so hard to prioritize yourself, right? To love yourself, to take care of your mental health, to take care of your emotional well-being, the guilt that comes with that, because it's like, oh my gosh, okay, I'm making sure I try, but everything else is is it's going falling to hell. apart. You know, so it's like, okay, do I choose myself, or do I now start picking up everybody and putting everybody on my back? What do I do? What do I do? Me, I still don't know, guys. This year, I'm not ready to find out. This year I'm ready to find out because I feel like last year I I was guys I'm telling you in all honesty I had gotten to a point where I felt like I was losing my mind. I think that's actually the, the right way to put it. I was completely losing my mind. It's almost like the responsibility now became it was no longer you know sometimes you you know I you know some light. I feel like I'm going to cry. Really? I feel yeah. like I'm going to cry. Oh, no. It's okay. Okay. Continue. You were losing your mind. Yeah, last year I was losing my mind. I was called Mora. I there's a time I think I called Mora. Yeah, that's why I, I want to cry. I wept, guys. Like I was crying to the point that I couldn't even. You know when you can't even you can't even catch a breath. You are literally your life is. I I I was ready to give up. You know I was just like you know what actually what an erudio shago. I was like let me pack my things. I get a suitcase. I go back to the village because I actually can't do this anymore yeah. because it's hard and you know I feel like it's really I mean life happens to everybody to our parents to, to all of us right so we can never predict how things happen but I think that at the same time it's okay to feel like you should be protected from some things especially as a firstborn daughter in a family it's completely valid for you to feel like as much as I'm supporting everybody, I should not be in this uh, position to begin with. You know, because at the end of the day, we're still children. And you know, the worst thing is that the judgment, like the standard, the, the, like your parents are very tough with you. Yes. You must do this. Mm. And if you don't do this, yes. this means this. And I'm embarrassed because you didn't do this. I mean, the standards are. They are on another level. Hi. They are on another level. Like, you have to do this anything. Yeah. You know, it's very tough. So yeah. you then think, 
Okay, so if I tell to this person, yes, no, mm. and I disappoint them, yes. what does that mean? What does that mean? What does that say about myself? Yeah, mm. and then there's also the guilt of they are my mom. Mm. It's my dad. And when, when they when oh. they now start invoking biblical scriptures about honoring your parents, when they start doing that. We don't even have the answer yet. When they say, guys, we don't have the answer. This is actually at the moment. This is not what we are dealing with this year. This year, I think for me, is about finding the balance of giving and holding back. I need to find that balance for when to say, okay, I can only give so much. But when I get to this point, like all of you, figure it out. Like all of you, figure 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 yourselves out because I can only support you to this level without completely depleting myself, depleting my resources, depleting my my, my mental health, my emotional well-being, all those things that make you as a person that make you wholesome. Okay, all those things you need to find a balance because you will be spent. You will be so spent. I, I think so. But I actually think like if you if you're in your home and maybe you have two parents, maybe yes. the dynamic is a little different. Yes. You can and for me I think I have been able to rely on my mom more. Yeah. And to like I think she's been able to say to, to tell like <laughs> Yeah. Mora no day. She's mm. not gonna do that. Like yeah. and she relies on me but not as much as like she used to, yeah. Because I think she knows the struggle, mm -hmm. and so she understands that as much as I'm, I need to be an active member of my family. Mm -hmm. I need to make my own life. Absolutely. Yeah. So if your mom is not already hooked in patriarchy's claws, yes. Because you can go to think you're relying on your mom, yeah. And she's like, so you want to betray me, yeah. You want to leave me, yes. Or, you know, you can actually just go and speak to her and be like, okay, mom, you know what, actually. Yeah. Um, me personally, I want to do less. Yes, and I, you can only rely on me for one, yes. two, and three. Yeah, past that boundaries. Guys. Don't rely oh my on gosh. me. I, I have my own things time. I'm doing. Boundaries. Yeah. If you don't have boundaries with your parents, with your siblings, with your siblings, with your aunties, with your uncle, with everybody. With your my goodness, you will, guys. I'm telling you, generational. Cycles are a very real thing. Do you know, first of all, very very real real you can even tell them in the workplace. At yeah. the workplace, I can identify. They overextend themselves. They're like, okay, I'll file those. I'll take those. I'll do that. Do that. Leave that to me. Please, what? No, leave it. Leave it. Can I carry lunch for you guys tomorrow? Are you for hungry? It's so bad. It's crazy. Yeah. So anyway, after that short venting session, <laughs> <laughs> guys, I, I think we actually don't have the answers on this one. We really don't have the answers. I think we were just a little... We're still trying to it. navigate it and we're going to shoot um, a, a follow-up video, right? I think this one we should bring like a, you know, a therapist, a someone. We should bring a therapist. Because I remember we were talking, we were talking with Komboka about this last week. Komboka is my cousin. We've done a, a good, good yes. video about, um, what was the video about? Gaslighting, yes. manipulation, yes. narcissism. We'll Dealing with yeah. your enemy, dating your enemy. Dating your enemy. Yes. Done this with Komboka. And we're really talking about just being a first one and you know even when she doesn't have the answers and she's you know Gosh, she wants have that answers, guys there are no answers there are literally no answers but what i can say for now is that if the damage is really bad you need to go and see a therapist for sure i think yes seek help and if you have a great support system even friends, friends. i think i'm actually so grateful last year my friends really held me down during my difficult season yeah. because I don't know what I would have done without you guys actually I honestly so don't know what I would have done without you guys it what? It right bad. now guys <laughs> I would be now because this is the rainy season I would be planting it would yeah, have been, been so bad yeah gosh because you're actually empty you're completely drained yeah mm. but I think another thing that helps is like take distance Yes, for sure. If you can move, move. Yeah, if you can go and stay with a friend for some time, take a break. Do that. Yeah, yeah, take a break. Be yes. like, okay, um, I'm going to stay with my friend for a week. I'll, I'll be back. Yes. You just need time. Absolutely. Yes, you need time. time. Because yes. your passportness doesn't even end at home. You carry it in the workplace, you carry yeah. it in relationships, you carry it everywhere. Everywhere, literally. Oh my gosh. So bad. 
I'm thinking about it and I'm like, is this why I'm that kind of employee? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this is my first point that seep into every area of my life. No, guys, our follow-up video will be on relationship dynamics between mothers and daughters. And that's why we will really go to the nitty-gritty. We'll have Moral's mom <laughs> as our guest. I'm so scared she likes I hope us. you for you are ready. <laughs> I hope you're ready because I'll be what you, who Trevor Noah. I'll be Oprah Winfrey. But you see, you can't be the Trevor Noah here. Why? Let me tell you why. Mm. Because my mom knows too much about us together. <laughs> She'll be and the girls what they did after that. <laughs> so, oh my but gosh, I think yes. I think that's this is a good start. Like we don't really have the answers, guys. But guys, we don't have we the answers. Hoping, Yes, but actually, I think this video is great as a conversation starter, Sata, right? That's exactly Please that's comment true. about your experiences, your challenges. Then we will do a part two that is more comprehensive about and with a, a guest therapist or just somebody that is well versed yeah, on such psychological matters. Yeah, this is a psychological If you want issue. a guest, please let us know. Yeah, please let us know if you'd like to come on and have this discussion with us because we would love to have you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.